Today we're talking about 1956 Tyco, the original MU motor. The first one, the, the, before the MU2, the MU1. We're going to show you how to take it apart, rip, whip it up into shape, clean up some aluminum extruded passenger cars, make them shiny, get this beautiful 1957 set up and running the rails again. Hello, I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. MU, and I've heard of an MU too, MU, let me show you the difference, how you can tell what an MU looks like, the original one, motorized unit, the first one, compared to the second one. Now the MU motor, the original one, the biggest difference that you can see is that it's got screws down here where you can get in there and open it up and service it. Where the MU2s, they're riveted. If anybody that's ever worked on these, same kind of, it looks the same. They've got the gears on the axles, horizontal shaft motor. But as you can see here, rivets and the gears are covered up. Screws so a guy can get in there and work on it. And the gears are open. And of course the front trucks are different too because you can just, you can get in here and work on these, on this older MU. And then the MU2 trucks, they're, they're riveted. So you can't get in there and work on them that good. Today we're mainly focusing on as referred to as the Shark Nose. Shark Nose was a nickname they gave to the Baldwin RF-16s, manufactured from 1950 to 1953. The Tyco Mantua version started in 1953 and was available up until, you know, the mid 80s. Although there was a little gap there from 1960 to the mid 70s where they quit making them all together for a little while. Mantua. I keep getting told I'm pronouncing it wrong. They say that it's Manchua is the way it's supposed to be pronounced. I gotta tell you, we don't call this here a choo-choo train. It's spelled choo-choo, right? So if you want me to pronounce Mantua, Manchua, change the spelling of it. I'm from the west of the Mississippi. All of us Midwesterners out here, we call it Mantua. How many other people are with me? Mantua? Yes. Mantua. Put your comments down below. I think the majority of people call them Mantuas. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> it's been a little while since I gave a history lesson. Let's learn about these shark noses just a little bit. Now these Tyco shark noses, the die cast ones with the MU motor in them, they had some variations that were available on the day. I did a little research on a Tyco form. This is what I found out. From 1953 to 1957, only the Tyco road name or no road name was cataloged. 1953 to 1955, the headlight opening is closed, no light bulb available in it. 1953 to 56, all the sharks had an open pilot with the Mantua loop and hook couplers. 53 to 1955, sharks did not have horns. From 1956 to 1960s, Sharks were redesigned a little bit. They had closed pilots, gimbal mounted power trucks, no front couplers, plastic horns were added to the roof, and functioning headlights were installed. The hook and loop couplers were changed out to the XF2 or horn hooks. Slots were added into the roof above the MU motor for heat dissipation. 1956, the silver with red pendant was made available. 1958, the Union Pacific and Pennsylvanian Shark was made available. The last diecast shark was available in 1960 and it was only available with the Pennsylvania livery on it. And by the mid 70s the sharks were reintroduced with plastic bodies and the famous power torque drive system. Well that's enough of me yapping. Let, let's get into this. Let's get into this restoration show you how I did it. Well here's this old shark nose and what she looks like kind of in Kind of in poor shape, of course. What you expect, everything is always stacked on the top of them. The sides really ain't too bad at all, a little dirty. We wanna get these trucks out of here, working on this MU1 motor here. They're very similar to the MU2s, but they've got these, these screws here these that you can take out and you can work on them compared to the MU2s. We pop these four out right here. And once these four are out, it's going to allow us to take off this bottom truck cover right here oh we can see stuff in there yeah this little brass plate here is acting as the axle bushings 
bearings. Got a couple of brass wheels here that you can't hardly tell because they're so dirty. Looks like this motor hole. Look at that. Golly, that's, that's nasty. Two bolts here on each side will get this truck out. Big, long brass bolts here. Nice. I like the way this is engineered. Oh, yeah. Look at this filthy armature right there. God. I'm going to get this front truck out of the way. So we got to clean these wheels up. And the only way you can get this out of the body is, of course, by taking off these truck frames. Four bolts pulled. Oh, this one comes apart. A little differently than the back one. The wheels are captured in the truck frames. Two bolts way down deep inside here. Upper truck block right there. And boy, look at this light bulb mechanism. Holy moly. So bolt into there, we're gonna pop out. I really want this light bulb to come out of there. It's stuck because of the thickness of the bulb. It's got a light shield all the way around this light bulb here. See if we can get in here, dig this this out. I'm sure that it's just friction fitted in. Uh-huh, yeah, there we go. And if this bulb wouldn't have been round like that, I could have got it to come out of there without going through all this. It's like somebody's done some creative reworking. This must have broke off and man, did they, they really went to town on it to, to put this little post back in. I'm gonna take this body, I'm gonna wash it up. And then maybe we'll wax it and see if we can get her to come back around a lot more. Heavy, heavy body. Mercy. Going back to this guy to get this pivot off. Bolt here, a little bolt right there. Then this little feller, flop it in the wind. Now, of course, I want to remember to put that on right. Here's the number, 4708. We're going to put that up. Here you can take these magnets. Maybe working like the stator magnets, the magnet is right up in here. Take this off, long brass, long brass like that. These guys, yes. Sometimes guys like to say, don't take those apart or else you'll lose your magnetism. I do what? Here's a machine bolt up here. I bet you we're gonna be able to take this motor frame completely apart by removing that. There's an armature keepers right here. These four little tiny guys, pop those out. There's one, another one right here. You can see that there's a ramp, kind of a ramp shape to them. Looks like those go out, they go away. They go towards the worm gears when you put those in. Of course, this armature will come out. Bearings right in through here. Very nice, very nice. The brushes are now flopping in the wind right there. This brush holder is a separate piece. Oh, look at that. That whole thing, that whole thing comes apart. Nice. Very get in there and work on a, a bull. I like it. A lot of parts. A lot of dirt, filth in here. So, of course, I'm going to come in with some Q-tips. Clean all this out with the odorless mineral spirits. We'll get this all cleaned up. Test things out. I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this here episode. Yeah, yeah, I got a spot. Well, my sponsor is me and my and my eBay page. A lot of the stuff that I got that I work on, I, I fix it up and then I, I sell it. So if you want to see some of the stuff you might have seen on the tracks, check out my eBay page. Here's the link right here, how to get to it directly. I'll also put it down in the comments down below. Feller's got to do what he's got to do to try to make a little extra scratch because, I, you know, expenses. Because <laughs> you don't get paid very much making YouTube videos, I'll tell you that. So check it out and see if there's something that you can buy. Help support the page. After a good hour, hour of digging around on this thing, we finally got her whooped into shape where it's clean enough to put back together. This thing, at least they oiled it back in the day. And then nobody oiled it for many, 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 many years. So Q-tips. Odorless Mineral Spirits went through, cleaned up all the pieces, parts, motor frames. I haven't polished the commutator yet. Cleaned the brushes, screws, front end, rear end, a lot of parts. Man, what a lot of parts. Now these little wheels, I, I think they're thinner than they are nowadays. So I decided to use the Dremel with the little wire wheel and really, really 
be careful and go after all this stuff here on the rear truck and of course the front trucks because they are the part of the pickup too and then i had to have a smoke and a beer did some online reading come to find out that these mu motors the first generation the front truck picks up power but the only way the juice gets up to this frame right here is from the axles making contact with the truck side frames that have got a, a rivet riveting up to this metal plate they guys say that these have a tendency to not conduct the juice very good i took this screw out you can see it's kind of shiny right there because the motor of course screwed in right there and then the headlight screwed in right there so i polished up that that piece of cast real nice so it makes good contact and then very carefully polished up the top and bottom of these to make sure that they're going to get the juice flowing through them polished up in here maybe i should polish in there more because it needs Needs all the help it can get. Guess we are getting ready to put this together. I took the body and I just simply washed it with some soap and water under the running sink. You know, if it wasn't for the top right here, if I was any good at, at masking and painting, I would, I'd probably repaint it. But it'd have to be identical, you know. It's not like these are collectibles where if I repaint it, I'm going to knock its value down by $250 to $500. It, it just unfortunately isn't that way. Well, this is how nice and clean the the original body looks closed in front pilot on it 1957 version right there headlight open horns no road name this spring holder you see this rounded rounded little little island little nibbin right there look here's one right there the brush springs they're pushed out way down inside of here pull them up with the screwdriver i think we'll just use some toothpicks to hold them little buggers out yeah yep there you can see the is this gonna work Maybe it'll work. Currently, it's working. So there's that in there. This armature, these little guys right here, they're bearings. See that little mark that's missing right there? That's a timing mark. That keeps these from spinning round when everything is installed. There's little timing marks right down inside of here and in there. So when you put this little fella in, you gotta get them timing marks. They gotta be lined up. Helps if we put it in the right direction, commutator goes in where the brush holders are at now you can tell if it's timed because one of these notches will be facing up up yeah see that that means the one on the bottom it's facing down now somebody they really really went to town on the earl on this thing we're gonna give it just the tiniest little taste up over here work that into this lower bearing we're gonna give it some right up in there we're gonna work it into that bearing oh it just smoothed right out oh man is it just flowing I can just feel it. Next thing we got are these armature retaining devices, brackets, things. Hold it in. Now, when I took them out, see this part right here? It's kind of a rampy area. Well, it faces outwards towards the worm gears like this. Two of them. One for each side. You don't got to torque them on like a lug nut either. Give it just a little, little snuggin'. All four of these fellers. And there. Now we got our armature in the motor mountings area i want to work on putting these brushes in and of course like any other brush they've got a mark on the top so you got to put these in and you got to line that timing mark up if i can just push this off to the side here a little bit yes make that line straight up and down get the spring to hold that keeps those brushes from rotating in there they got to stay they got to stay in place there we go timed up this screw comes in the back side here and it's going to screw into this plate right there and that's what holds the brush holders in place get the magnet then these side magnetic pieces one bolt line it all up holds this whole thing together make sure everybody's kind of square and straight and flat and nothing's dragging then send her home Right now, I'm making sure that nothing's hanging up. Make sure this armature spins freely. This thing's actually assembled enough where a guy could could run it. We're about 40% on the transformer. Kind of a fun fact I just, I just found out. You don't want to let this metal plate touch this part right here, which is the metal frame, because that'll just short the whole thing out for some reason when you go to try to juice it up. So keep a little air gap. This gimbal mount right here, sits in here but it's got some wear points 
right there. I'm going to give it a little bit of this here. Super lube, multi-purpose synthetic grease. Give it just a little taste. It don't need much. Just, it just some. That's exactly the amount that I was talking about. These little screws with the little kind of washer heads on the bottom, they go in. These are what keep the gimbal, gimbal on, gimbling. Uh-huh, sure. This is our front truck block right here. So we want to put our rear truck and our headlight wires under the screw I cleaned up. Which way can I, look at this, you can put the truck on this way or you could put it on this way. This is the underneath of it, this is the front end. I'm gonna put these on with the brass wheels over here on this side. This would be the fireman's side once it's standing completely up. Just a couple to hold that together. More multi-purpose synthetic grease for these worm gears in here. Fixing to put the geared axles in. Brass plate goes on, brass wheels, opposite side. I just wanna run it around without the body on it. In all actuality, this should run around on the track right now. Let's check it out. See if it does. Oh yeah, that's definitely working. Nice and smooth. Oh, brought her back. Let's take a little break right now for Classic Model Trains. Classic Model. If you know who this is, put it in the comments down below. I think I'm gonna change it up here a little bit too. I'll also let you know at the end of this episode. Well, after a successful run on the track, of course we gotta take these truck frames off in order to assemble the lowers into the body. There's something else I need to do though. This XF2 back here, it's broken and we need to put some Katie's on this thing. Screw right here, just a little feller. Pop that guy out, take this cover off. What do we got going on here? It was sitting in there like that and I'm betting to slip a really short shank whisker in right there. I think it's gonna just hook right up. I, I just almost think it is perfectly. We're gonna take some fuel line. We're gonna cut a little chunk off. It's the same thickness as the diameter of that. So it looks like this little guy right here, we put him on that pin. So we gotta put the coupler in like this. Are we going to get lucky? Yep, we just converted that over to Katie. Super easy and short. So we don't got that really long gap in between the A and the B or the A and the cars. And this is a short, it's a 143 whisker short. So if it's too close, then I just swap it out to a medium or a long. There's just op options. Oh, there's so many options. Now that we've ran that a little bit, I wanna give it just a little another, another taste up here on these gears. Get our body pad here. We're gonna slip this guy in. It's got marks that line up on the body. Put it in like that. Oh, like I forgot to mention, when you're putting these in, you gotta put the brass plate in. We should grease that too for these axle guides right here. Four little spots. Put these little brass guys in. Holds the whole thing into the locomotive. See, that allows the truck to pivot back and forth, rotate around. Oh, gimbal. It's a gimbal. That's what they say, gimbal. This all lined up. Put this guy in, and then we can finally put the power truck in permanent. Just a little snuggin'. I managed to find a bulb that works. So we gotta assemble this first. Put the bulb in the holder and then put the assembly in the loco and then bolt the bulb holder down. Sure. So that screw down there's in. This little plate is on the light shield so it doesn't shine light down underneath. God, they just built these so nice back then. We're gonna drop these two screws in now instead of fighting them when it's inside there. Then get one started, get the other started. Yeah, there it is. Kind of neglected to oil up our front truck, so we're gonna knock that out now. Brass wheels on the opposite side. Yep, four tightened up there, four tightened up up in here. That loco running like a dream. I'm not ready to show it off yet. Let's get those cars, those passenger cars, those aluminum extruded, old fashioned -y, nice and heavy passenger cars. Let me show you what I did to them to update them to Katie's and to get that that nasty aluminum looking shiny and bright once again. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get these trucks off the bottom here. Simple screw right in the center of it and then you've got insulating washers, top and bottom. Trucks are out of the way, but we gotta cut this rivet off right here that's holding this hook and loop on. Now I don't got a complete set of these hook and loops, that's why, another you know, reason why I gotta replace them. Just the tiniest bit of grinding 
come in here and you pry these little fellers off from the bottom and they'll come right out. Save these for one day when I only need one. Now this hole right here is perfect for tapping out with a 256. Now I'm using some 143 Katie Whiskers shorts. And they also come with these universal draft boxes here. This makes it super, super easy. Of course, trim off the little scoobies that are left when you pop those out of there. Get your draft box, put your coupler in with the pin facing up, get the lid, snap it on, make sure that the word Katie is facing up. And then I've got some 256 by quarter inch machine screws. Now these are a little, little long. You're gonna come up from the bottom, screw this in to where that existing rivet was that we tapped out, and that bolts on quite nicely. Now, I wish I had like eighth inch or 3 16 inch. So these are a little long, so I have to trim this off. So I trim it off till it's about that long right there. And you wanna check it with your coupler height gauge. Yep, works for me. We'll take the trucks and clean them up. These are brass wheels here for the electrical pickups. So I find just giving them some scratchings like this, gets those wheels shined up. Trucks got some kind of some corrosion on them. Zymac die cast. And then of course, when it's all said and done, get in there, give them a little taste of oil, and these trucks are brought back around. I wanna clean this body up, but we gotta take all the stuff that's in it. We gotta take it off. Two little screws here, and I'm not kidding, they are little, little fellers. Oh, goodness. And then these ends, they'll slide out. Now you gotta kinda pay attention how this all goes back together. You can see how these doors have got a lip on them right here. And they're gonna, you know, they, they, they slide in. So there's certain ways that you've gotta put this whole thing together and it, it all holds itself together by the way that it is. See, these will end up going back in like that, flush with the door. See this little tit right there? There's little holes in only one end. So these only go on one direction. So we're gonna get all this stuff out of it. We'll pull this other side out. Slides in and out. Extruded aluminum comes out of a machine like the Play-Doh Fun Factory and just squirts it out. Then they cut it to length and then they route out the windows. Every one of these bodies is almost completely identical. This piece right here slides out along with the windows. You see the window material is coming out right here. And when it comes out, you're gonna see that there's these little grooves that's cut here. And there's grooves right there. So when you go to put this back together, those grooves, they, they gotta line up. And I found this out from the first two that I've already done off camera so I can figure out what the heck I'm doing. So there's our body. Now we gotta get these decals off. We're gonna go back to this Microsol number two. Microsol number two. This will remove decals also. It makes them so soft that they, they, they just, you can just make them fall off, pretty much, sort of. Then I use the wooden end of this brush here. And I've scraped it and it really, a lot of it's scraped off finally. Of course, you know, you don't wanna use anything really hard because it'll scratch your aluminum extruded body. Now that we got the decal off, there's a still a lot of oxidation on this thing. So we're going to give it the old wax job. And of course, once you get the wax on, then you gotta let it dry. So have a smoke and a beer, come back, we'll buff it off. After a while, once your wax, wax dries, then you can get yourself a cloth and you can, you can buff the stuff off. And then, of course, the more you buff it, the shinier it gets, and, and, it, and then it makes your arms tired. So I decided to do something cute, and I took my orbital sander, and I put about three of these things on it. And I can really buff up a storm now. Holy moly. <laughs> I found to get a nice sheen. I gotta, I gotta wax it and buff it two times. So here's just after the first time, we'll hit it up again, let it dry, and then it should be really shiny. That's what I'm hoping for. Shine, glisten. Then after a couple of buffings, 
this is what she comes out looking like. So I like that. Now, a person with this aluminum, you could buff it until this looks like a mere, a mere finish. Just keep waxing and buffing it off and waxing and buffing it off. I don't, and then you'd have to clear it or else it would just uh, oxidize again. But I'm not going to go that far. That's just too much. Too much for me. Now, remember how I said this whole thing all kind of snaps together all on its own. This plate is stepped. So when we put it in, we're going to put it in under here. See this little, there's a, this part, this right, this and these two. Pieces go on top. And pieces go down below on it. This particular piece is going to be put in underneath of it, like this. See? And then it's, it's going to slide into its little happy home down under here. See, I can't pull it up, but I can push it down. We've also got to put our windows in at the same time. Because this tab here holds the windows in against the outside. Oh, I'm telling, I know. It's just got, there's just so much going on here. The windows are gonna slide into this track right under here. So see, they, they go in sort of like this. This is one of those jobs that just makes a guy go almost insane. So on the windows, that this, this piece here, the windows have to be on the outside of it because this metal thing holds it against the body. And once it gets started, it's not too bad, but and then you just push this in, keeping everything in time. And of course, you know, don't make sure the windows aren't over, you know, covering up this door. This center's in there, so it just covers up all the aluminum cutout windows. Then on this door side, these doors will only go in one way. This one is the wrong door, as you can see, because this has got to go forward. This is the right door, and it goes in like this. There's a groove right up here in the top that the top of the door goes into and they will fall in on you when you're not looking. Flush to the end of the body. Uh-huh. And then you get your end frame. It's got these two little cutout tits right here. Here's the downside. This piece of metal here, it has to be on the top of that extrusion. And this plastic, it has to be on the bottom. And then these side things here also hold the, the windows in. So you put it in, starting on the top of the extrusion. You can, here's the extrusion I'm talking about, this lip. This ear is on the top. These ears are on the bottom. And as this is slid in, then you get to this part, and the plastic's gotta be, on, and it's hard. So I put these in to kinda help spread out the top and bottom. And then when you go to fight this some more, and oh, there. Yes, flush to the end. Screw holes lined up. Put the two little screws back in. Little waxing residue down under here. I'll try to get this cleaned up. These truck washers. See this little tit right here? That goes up. Then your truck, of course, will come in here. They're insulated. So these could be lighted cars if one was so inclined. These screws here, you know, you can make them snug because the bushing will keep everything spinning, moving freely. One more truck screw to finish off. See, that's why you, you can't have screws that are too long, because if you do, they'll drag right here, and it won't allow your truck to make this kind of pivot. So you gotta be careful that them screws right there are not too long. Little buffing residue. Finally test drive this whole thing. Well, this has taken me a couple days to get knocked out. Let's get it up on the track and let you guys put your, put your peepers on.